What's up guys, I wanted to show you some cool things that you can do with primitives. So firstly, uh, we add a primitive and we have all of these. The box doesn't really get too exciting. Uh, so let's start with a cylinder first. So we have our cylinder. Uh, we haven't validated it. Let's just bring it down to my little flat box floor. So before you validate, you have these options up here. So once I tap there, you have these. Uh, parameters. This is sort of similar to, I'm going to turn on the wireframe. So if I zoom that up, it just gets more dense. So the shape just gets more dense. Um, if you do linear subdivision, and this is the topology, it all gets kind of confusing, but essentially the more you have here, the more dense it is as well. But you can also bring this down and it gets less dense and it actually starts to like straighten out. So let's say we do something like this, kind of a cool shape. Uh, and this is one of the, one of the only times that I really turn um, smooth shading off. Otherwise I just leave it off, leave it on. But let me turn it off if I can remember the right place to go. Nope, there we go. Smooth shading off. So then you just kind of see it like as it is. So obviously it's only 12, what is it, vertices or faces, polygons? But anyway, so what I would do now, if I wanted to keep this shape and like, you know, it's fine as it is, but if I was gonna keep it, I would just voxel remesh it at like 200. I'm just using the shortcut here. It's the same as if I were to go, oh, I gotta validate it first. I validate it and then you go here and go to a uh, voxel remesh and we'll just do it at like 200. I'll turn the wireframe off. So then we just have a nice sturdy block. I'm going to use round edge. You can check out the video if you don't have that tool, but you probably have by now just to smooth it out. So it's nice and clean. And maybe I'll do this with, um, Metcap might be a little bit easier to see. So then you have an easy shape like that, which would be kind of difficult to make any other way. But you can change the, the density before you validate, and you can kind of do um, sort of shapes like this. So let's try the next one. Uh, let's do a sphere. We'll use our gizmo and just bring it up. So we have a sphere, and then we have the little sphere icon up here. And here we'll just change the parameter. Let me turn back on the wireframe. So we'll change the parameter and see how it kind of turns into a box if you bring it too far down. So we'll just stick to that. So kind of an interesting shape. And then if you move it like this, you still, you know, you kind of get an interesting shape that you wouldn't get otherwise. So let's do what we did. We'll validate. I'll turn the wireframe off and I'll just voxel remesh it at 200. And it looks something like that. It's smooth shading back on. Turn it off. There we go. So you have an interesting shape like that. It's only 26, but you can't really do much with it. That's why I would voxel remesh it if you like want to work with it or sculpt on it or something like that. So we'll just do this for now. All right, so let's move this down some. Next we have A torus. Let's do a torus. Let's do a torus. So then this little donut up here. So we'll tap that. A linear subdivision. And the division X. And actually you can do like, I think you can do this sort of thing too. You can just change the specific, specific one and make it like a, ooh, never done that before. And I think you can change this as well. If I wanted to make it flat. It's kind of interesting. And I guess for every mesh, the smooth shading turns on and off. No, it's off. Oh, it's on. So it's for each specific shape. I don't think I knew that. So let's turn it off. That's pretty cool. 
pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and remesh this at 200. And then we have this kind of cool shape. And of course, like I was saying before, you know, you can make all sorts of all sorts of shapes and things. Let's bring that down, and let's try, actually I want to show you the other thing that I did with the Taurus, I just want to make it a little thicker, but let's change linear subdivision and then we'll just do X, just turn X down, yeah that's kind of interesting, and we'll turn smooth shading off. So you kind of see it as it is. That's cool. What does hole do? It's interesting. What is this doing? Okay. okay. So you can make a shape like this. I wonder if I can make it... It'd be kind of cool if you could make like a diamond sort of thing. I don't know. But it's cool. I like it. Let's validate. This box will remesh it. There we go. You can probably remesh it higher than that. Let's go higher. If I want to try to keep the edges sharp, sharper, and then I'll do the round edge on it. Round the edges out a bit. Ooh, that's a little bit weird, but still, still works. And then I would normally just decimate it because we don't want it that huge. Look at that, 630 something, still looks pretty good. Um, anyway, let's bring this down a bit. Now we have this, I think I missed another shape. So let's add, ooh, a cone. Let's tap our gizmo and we'll bring it up. So let's go to our cone options. I wonder if I have to, yeah, I think I have to do linear. Oh, maybe I don't. But it looks really weird with um, smooth shading, so I'm going to turn that off. And you get something like this. I guess I don't have to do linear subdivision. Here's a three-sided. Maybe we should do four-sided. Let's do four-sided. So let's validate this. I want to clone it. I want to clone it and I want to turn it. I want to make like a diamond. That's what I want to do. Cone, cone. So I will just, let's live crazy and let's Fox a remesh it at like high so we can try to keep these points. We'll do 350 for fun, funsies. And let's do a, a rounded edge. So now we have our diamond. Let's see what happens if we make it smaller. That's kind of cool. Kind of have something like that. Oh, it sort of looks like, it starts to look like hard surface modeling as it gets loud in my apartment. Okay, I think that's all the shapes. This is our, this is odd enough as it is, and I never use it. Maybe I should Google like what people use this for. It's similar to this, but it's different. I don't. I never use it. Uh And I also don't know how to use the. I don't know how to use the triplanar. I have no idea how to use this. Maybe I should try to figure it out at some point in time. I have no idea how to use this, what this is for. Can't use any tools on it. I don't know. Maybe we'll learn at some point in time, but not today. Anyway, um, hope you guys like my trip home, my little video of my old artwork. 
I always like to, I don't like this, this is ugly. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Cause I have to come up with a, a cool, um, I have to come up with a cool, which I'm gonna call it. What do you call it? You make a video and then you have to make a thumbnail. That's what it is. So I need to make a decent thumbnail. So you know what we'll do? We'll go ahead and add, add fresh backdrop, add to scene. And that's just my normal, my normal everyday backdrop that I use. Assets. I need to put it somewhere where I can find it easy, more easily. So I'm always farting around trying to find it. Okay, so there we have our backdrop. We don't really need this thing. So let's delete it. Okay, so we have this we'll put on the ground. Then we have this. Maybe we want to like turn it. Maybe that will make it a little more interesting. That's kind of cool. Okay, what else can we do? Let's do... Ooh, let's take this and we'll clone it. And let's make it a mirror. We'll take it off of snap. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gotta be on the cone. Let's turn it this way. Bring it down and let's make these smaller. Do something like this. That's kind of cool. And what else can we do? Maybe we'll oh maybe we'll put like a, a sphere in there. Maybe that's maybe that's kind of cool. Let's validate, let's, let's trim these spheres. Oh, and let's, let's voxel remesh them. And let's do the rounded edge, make the bottom a little whatever. And then I'll go ahead and decimate them because they don't need to be crazy big. The projects are already big enough with those shapes that I didn't really pay attention to. So let's, let's make these smaller. Oh, you know what? I kind of have a better idea. Let's change this to a radial. Can I do that? I'll just move this up and get rid of this. So if it's a radial, there we go. Now there's four of them. Let's make it sace. That's kind of cool. And I think that's good. That might be good, good enough for, um, for a thumbnail. And obviously this is just extra. I figure I might as well just leave it on and you guys can watch what I do if you'd like. So if we're just, if it's gonna be a thumbnail, maybe we'll put, should I put it on this side or the other side? Maybe this side. So I'll put it there for now and add a view. And let's save whatever this is. Uh, dark primitives. I don't know why I want to want to call it the dark side of primitives. It doesn't really make much sense, but ooh, I I just thought of something else that might be cool. It happens a lot. Why can't I select this? There we go. I clone this Dotus snap. I turn it back like that and bring it down. I don't know, that's sort of interesting to me. It's 
kind of cool. What else would be cool is if I took these and lay, inlaid them all around this. That would kind of be cool too. Well, since I talked about it, I'll show you. But first, let's go ahead and decimate these a whole bunch. So I want to keep these, but I want to clone. And I want to take one out of the mirror and just have it on its own. So I'm going to rename this inlay. Inlay spike, whatever. Okay, so that's the inlay spike. So I just have to add a radial to it. Even that looks cool though. That looks really cool. Let's take the spike and let's do my original plan, which was to inlay this and even see if that works. No, I don't want to turn it that way. It doesn't really look how I thought it would look. What does that look like? That's interesting and weird. Kind of cool. Anyway, so let's go back to our view. And let's change this to lit PBR. I like to change everything to a rough white. And then, let's see. I don't know what color to make this stuff. Oh, I know what else I have to do. Let's change everything to... I tend to make things sort of yellow when I'm doing stuff like this. Oh, you know what I do before I paint? Let's go ahead and turn the environment off and add our lights. Let's make it a spotlight. So that's kind of cool. Let's make it soft. Make the light a little softer. And maybe turn it down a skosh. Alright, so we have that light, which is the key. And we could add a fill light, but I usually use it as the background, so I'm going to just call it BG spot and let's actually just move it to the background turn it down we'll make it nice and soft and we kind of want it like actually soft maybe even on it a little bit I don't mind that Turn it down, kind of get the area, kind of cool, we can make this soft too. So now let's add a, a light coming from one of the sides, let me make sure you can see this nice and clearly. So let's add a light coming from the side, 
We'll call it edge. It might not be super edge, but let's see. And again, this is all for my thumbnail because this isn't a character. That's kind of cool. Make that a little bit bright. And then let's do a top down. So add another one. We'll name it top down. And as some of you guys know, this is, I always do my lights like this. Spotlight. This is my go-to light setup. Right on top. Facing down, let's narrow this a bit, and let's soften it, small cone angle, we can even, do we want to soften it there? Yeah, let's soften it, lower it a little bit, make it cool, that's the front, oh yeah, that's the front, let's widen this up a little bit. Let's check it out with post post process. Do we need global? Global's kind of. We might not need it. Let's turn on the environment, but let's turn it down. It's really nice without it. I want to keep it. I just want to turn it down. So maybe something like that. Now let's change the color of the background, because that always makes a big difference in whatever you're creating. Do we want a nice warm background like that? Yeah, I think I like a nice warm background. Let's check our lights. Lights look good. Background can be a little bit brighter, actually. Let's make that a little brighter. Let's move it up a bit so it's right in the background. Okay, so now let's change the color of these. It does feel like it should be some sort of metal color. Upper. Okay, so there's that. Do we want to make it completely? We could even make it like glossy. What if we did something like that and we also change it to subsurface and we raise this up so it's like a little more translucent? It could be kind of cool. Or we could do additive or refraction. Whoa, look at that. That's kind of interesting. What if we made everything that color? Everything refraction. Oh, it's too dark. That's kind of cool. Let's make these like a little bit brighter, whiter. This, let's make like a different color. Let's do like a blue. Let's take the metalness out and let's make this glow. So we'll just clone it. And this one will make an additive, always unlit. We'll raise the opacity a little bit. 
It's not really glowing that much. Let's turn that on. It's sort of trippy. I feel like these should be a different color too. Maybe we'll do the same. Since they're really dark, let's change it to opaque. Inlay spike, so we'll clone the inlay spike. And we'll change the clone to additive, always unlit. And we'll raise that up a little bit. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like that, but I think these, they don't need to be opaque. So maybe subsurface is better. That looks nice though. Subsurface. Just needs it needs a new color. Maybe white. White is kind of cool. It's kind of it's kind of cool. Kind of like it. Just for the heck of it, let's see how other colors would look. I like the color we have. Anyway, yeah, I think this is cool. So let's turn the image resolution up. I don't think it needs any of these. I think it looks good as it is. These look really, really good. I like those a lot. Do we need any depth of field? I don't think so. Bloom, this might help the, the glowing. But I don't really think, I think it's fine. Make sure I don't have a vignette. Okay, cool. So that's how you can have some fun with primitives and just make cool stuff. I don't know, hopefully that was useful. I haven't been able to post that many videos because I was home for the weekend. So uh, feel free to check out that video of my weekend and I'll show you some of my old art. I think that's all I have to do with this. I think it looks good. There's always things you can do like uh, BG. You could change the color of the light. Let's see. Make it a little bit more bright. Look at that. That's nice. So let's save dark primitives and we'll export it. And I will show you a nice view of this in a second. Do I want to show you a turntable? Should I do 4K? I'll do 4K since it's going to be in the video. I'll do 4K. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out, really helps my channel out. Definitely check out my Skillshare classes. I have 2D classes in Procreate and 3D classes in Nomad Sculpt. Keep drawing, keep sculpting, and I'll see you all in the next video.